Hey everyone, I got a request for a uh, video on how to how I coat or color my steel, how to turn them black, <clears throat> and there's a lot of you know different ways to do it. Uh, there's chemicals, there's heat, there's paint, you know. So <clears throat> in those areas, there's a lot of different ones just in those areas. So uh, the first one we're going to talk about is paint, which these two do not apply to that category. You have these two. And the one on the left, this was coated in just a flat black quick color spray paint. And that's it. It was just coated in that and left how it is. This one was coated in a high gloss black lacquer. So you can see the difference there. Uh, this one's not as durable as the lacquer. This one will scratch and chip <clears throat> fairly easily. This one will be a little bit more durable, but not as durable as some of the other methods. Um, Anything I usually paint, or pretty much anything that I color black, uh, I usually give a quick dusting of clear Rust-Oleum lacquer. It just helps seal in whatever color that is, and the lacquer is pretty durable, so you don't gotta. I don't, don't really worry about stuff chipping or anything like that. So that's pretty much like the paints that I use. It's nothing secret or high tech or anything like that but the next method would be the black oxide or gun blue method um, this one on the bottom <clears throat> was black oxided and given a light coating of the clear lacquer to help seal that in because the black oxide will rust <clears throat> uh, you can see this one has just been black oxided you can't really tell on the video, but it's it looks black, but actually it's starting to turn like a brown color. And this one has got an antique look to it, which I really like. Because I did the, the black oxide. I didn't clean the steel 100% and everything else. Because with black oxide or gun blue, you got to take like Scotch-Brite and some cleaning solution. Uh... I'll post a link down there to uh, Suzuki Sensei's video on how he blackens his his shirkin. and he's got some great tips. He uses the gun blue, and you see him you'll see him scrub it with Scotch Brite and like some mild detergent or whatever. But if you don't clean it properly, you can see right there, right on the top, the black oxide didn't take it as well as the rest. And you can see how it's kind of, in some areas it's black, some areas it's kind of discolored a little bit. That's what happens if you don't clean them properly and the black oxide or gun blue doesn't take correctly. Which I actually kind of like. Because once I coated this in that uh, clear lacquer, it sealed all that in and it kind of gave it like an antique look. So that's kind of cool. So those are two other ways, the gun blue and the black oxide chemical. Black oxide you can buy offline or if you have a uh, tool and die supply store around you. Uh, gun blue you can buy offline, it's fairly cheap. Black oxide's a little more expensive. Uh, gun blue you can buy at like gun stores and places like that. I'm lucky enough to live in Michigan in, the, in a little bit north of Detroit where we have a lot of industrial places selling an array of different things. So I, I kind of lucked out on that. But you can find them. Um, so that's pretty much the chemical way of blackening things. I don't have any, any on me right now or I'd give a little demonstration of how stuff is black oxided. So sorry about that. Um, but I do have my last way of doing it, which I love to do. And it works great on small pieces or thin steel. Um, I have a small little half-ass forge that 
I do a lot of my thicker pieces in. It does take a little bit of um, trial and error to, to, to get the right temperature, but I call it oil blackening. And that's done with nothing but heat and old 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 motor oil. It went from something like this. You can see the difference to this. So I'll I'll give a little demonstration. I'm gonna turn off my my shop light. and show you hopefully it's not too dark now you can still see a little bit I'll give you a quick demo of how I do this I just got a propane torch uh, you can't really see but I'm clamping the uh, can't turn this kind of see I'm clamping my uh, piece and some channel locks and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start heating this up and I found when the steel will turn from like uh, gray to brown to blue and then you'll see it turn like a dark red which is starting to turn right now you can see as the flame goes over, it's turning like a chair, like a dark, deep red. And that's kind of the temperature you want to get it to. It doesn't need to be like 100% perfect all the way around. I just kind of, and then I'll go over to my oil real quick. And dip it in. Turn this off and plug the light back in so you guys can see. I just got some old motor oil in a bucket. Then I take it out. Get a old T-shirt. Wipe all the oil off. And there you go, it turned pretty much a dark uh, color. I I'm not going to say it's pitch black because you can see like hints of dark brown and uh, real dark blue in some areas. And it gives it kind of a, kind of a nice, you can see some of the blue right there. And you can see this is where I was grabbing it right there so you can see how it went from that color to this color. Uh, something like this. This also, this will rust if you don't uh, keep it oiled. But once again, I found that by taking some of the clear lacquer and just giving it a quick dusting, it'll go from something like this to like this. There's not that much difference, but this won't rust. Uh, like I said, the lacquer you can buy in uh, high gloss, you can buy it in satin, which is a little bit less of a gloss. So there's a bunch of different ways of uh, coating them to make sure they don't rust. So that's really it for the how I color them. Like I said, I'm going to post Suzuki's uh, link below, and it, it, I think it's also a favorite in my favorites if you go to my channel. So those are the ways that I do it. Um, there are other ways out there. I just choose to use these. Uh, they seem to be more practical, and I can do them at home, so that always helps out. So that's it for this. Uh, I might post another video. Uh, I'm testing out some homemade uh, 
Caltrops, or I think they're called uh, Matsubushi, I think. If I'm wrong, someone correct me down there, that'd be great. But I'm just testing out some designs, seeing how simple they are to make, see how strong they are. So, just a simple star cut out, and then cutting them out of sheet metal, and then bending them. So they'll, maybe I'll do a video on these, depending on how they work out. So maybe. So that's it for the coloring of uh, steel. Pretty short and sweet. Um, yeah, that's about it. So, hope this helped you guys out a little bit. If there's anything else that you guys are interested in seeing on you know, working with steel, how to make something, you know, how to make certain cuts, how to whatever, you know, send me a message. You know, if I if, if I can do it, I'll post a video on it and let you and show you guys how to do it. I got, I got no problem sharing information. I love doing that. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm coming up on uh, 50,000 views. And once I hit 50,000, I'm going to be doing a, a free giveaway on YouTube. So to thank my YouTube viewers. So whenever that comes, comes about, I'll be doing a free giveaway. I'll announce it and then... We'll see what's, what's, what'll happen with that. So thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.